Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and tonight we're going to uh, do a video on one of our specialities and as you're probably aware we're based in Worcester we do guided tours of the city we also write for the Worcester News we have a local history column in the Worcester News every month and therefore tonight our specialism our talk for you this evening is on local history and in particular we're going to concentrate on the Victorian era and even though we could do a talk on the industry for example we could mention Hill Evans uh, Hill and Evans uh, Vinegar Works for example which was actually uh, a topic of a Worcester Wednesday relatively recently on Facebook Twitter and Instagram uh, or we could mention the bone china industry, uh, Sigley's uh, sweet manufacturers, for example, or even the famous gloving that we have in Worcester. However, we're going to concentrate on the living conditions of people living in Worcester at that time. And it is quite shocking. And you will see that as we go through this short 15 minute video. Now, there is a person that crops up quite a bit when it comes to public health, when it comes to living conditions and when it comes to medicine in Worcester. And it's this individual here. And hopefully you can see it. Uh, this is a man called Sir Charles Hastings. Now, he is an absolutely fantastic individual. Uh, he really um, gave his whole life to medicine and in particular the uh, living conditions of the poor and in particular Worcester poor and he wanted to improve the lot uh, or improve the lives of many, many people in the city and, and, and in life generally, really. Sir Charles Hastings was a fantastic individual. He was uh, an apothecary. Uh, that was where his um, learning in medicine really started. Uh, and then he went on to surgery. And famously, he ended up as the physician and more importantly, the house surgeon at Worcester Infirmary. Now, Worcester has a long medical history and we do a tour of Worcester on medicine, medicine in Worcester, and it is a, a thought-provoking tour of the city. It's a walking tour and it takes you through, uh, for example, the medicine at Worcester Cathedral in the infirmary there and it goes all the way through. And when we get to the 1800s, we obviously mention Sir Charles Hastings. Um, Sir Charles Hastings was also a fantastic man who made use of the stethoscope. He was one of the early pioneers with stethoscopes. He didn't invent it, but he was one that said it was a good idea. And he actually specialised in uh, chests. And if he was around now in 2020, he would be quite interested uh, in COVID-19 and in particular how it spread and, and how it affects the lungs, for example, because he himself suffered with his lungs. I know when he was training in Edinburgh to be a surgeon, he suffered badly from his lungs because of the pollution in the dark, dank uh, streets of Edinburgh and he was quite glad to get back to Worcestershire where he said the air was much cleaner but Sir Charles Hastings he specifically looks at two things in his life really uh, and these are things that we know him for today the first one interestingly uh, was occupational health now this is a word that we use today occupational health and what he actually did was look at the trades in the city of Worcester and then he actually looked at all all the people coming in to the infirmary and he actually highlighted there were links between certain diseases certain injuries that were constantly linking back to a specific trade for example if you worked in the bone china industry they often suffered with their chest uh, mainly because of the particles of dust from the clay uh, in their manufacturing uh, he also stated that a lot of the lead glazers uh, were poisoning themselves and uh, the, 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 the most obvious effects of lead poisoning is not just the madness but actually a line appearing on the gum and that's a really really good Good indicator that someone's got lead poisoning and uh, he made that link saying that well if they're handling the pottery into lead glazes they're absorbing the lead through their skin so they're poisoning themselves so like I said he was linking trades with illness and injury so it's an amazing thing occupational health but the other thing that Sir Charles Hastings was famous for was his ability to improve 
people's lives. When he was made freeman of the city, he actually turned it down. That's why he's not a freeman. He turned it down because he said he was more important or shall we say his uh, work in society was more important than going for a meal and sitting and drinking wine with the mayor. And that's his almost his exact words. So Sir Charles Hastings said he wanted to improve people's lot in life. He wanted to improve the way they were living. And uh, he did this uh, a number of different ways. And he decided to actually come together and formulate a, a health report for the city. And that's what this talks on, really. The health report is an interesting one because uh, he pulls no punches. Um, he didn't just do it on his own. He had a, a, a board of health with him and he sent them all out. And he, they, they did a number of things uh, and came back to create a report. The health report, by the way, can be accessed. Um, if you go to the Hive when the lockdown finishes, uh, you'll be able to access it there. And I think there's some online because I think the Hive or in particular Explore the Past, I'm sure they've done a few blogs uh, on Sir Charles Hastings over the years. I will also add it's worth going to one of the medical museums in Worcester as well when they open. We've got one which is actually at the modern hospital um, and that's really worth having a look at and we've also got one in the infirmary where Sir Charles Hastings worked. Um, another interesting fact is within uh, that building, the infirmary, um, Sir Charles Hastings in 1832 formed the British Medical Association, which is still going today. Anyway, going back to the topic of uh, health or shall we say really the living conditions of Worcester people long ago. Um, I'm going to come out with a few of the descriptions from this health report and hopefully you've eaten your tea and that's gone down because some of these descriptions are pretty horrific things really. So where or how did people live in Worcester? Well, it's mentioned in the health report and I will read the uh, a few extracts from it. It says here, most of Worcester, most of the Worcester poor live in courts. Now, that's nothing too unusual. Um, for Worcester especially, but if you live in some of the other places like Birmingham and so on, um, it, it, they, they usually use a different name, back-to-backs, for example, if you live in Birmingham. So Worcester people live in a system known as a court, and it goes into a bit more detail, describing it in a bit more detail. These contain from 5 to 20 houses, are entered by a covered passage and have no thoroughfare. So once you enter under the archway, you will see the houses running around you. So a courtyard, basically. Um, there's no exit. You'd have to go out the same way you came in, basically. Most of the houses have a first and many second floor. The court is generally narrow, ill-paved and without any efficient drainage. And that really goes to show that there was no... Uh, block paving there was no cobbles or stone most of these courts were mud so obviously in the winter time it was just a mass of mud and standing water and then in the summer it dried rock hard and was pretty much an ankle breaker and uh, would have filled the air with dust basically no efficient drainage so a vast amount of of of, of standing water it contains a pump the water of which is too hard for washing and sometimes tainted. And near it are one and sometimes two privies. So if you think about it, 20 houses or five houses, two privies, because obviously no one's got a toilet within their home. The contents of which are received into a large open cesspool. So it sort of just sits there really uh, with flies in the summer and ice forming on it in the winter, really. In no case is any distinction of sex or age observed, and the nuisance in one court is often materially augmented by the influx of strangers from other, even worse, provided. So there's it, it, it doesn't sound a nice place to live, really. Um, as I said, the old uh, with the young. Everyone's just thrown in together, literally living on top of each other. Now, originally, the court system that would have started really in the 18th century 
work quite well. You'd enter this courtyard and you would have these houses dotted around. And obviously you would go into a hallway. You may have a front room, a, a kitchen area, and then a bedroom upstairs. However, by the 19th century, due to the population boom in Worcester, you would have had people absolutely living everywhere. So you would have had people living in the cellar where there was no windows, no form of ventilation as such, very dank and, and dark. And then you would have had people living in the front room, people living in the back room, people living upstairs, and even people living in any form of attic space upstairs. You also get mentions of how people are living in all sorts of shacks and workshops as well. It must have been absolutely horrific. Um, it goes on to say about the cesspit and it goes on to say about the privy, for example, uh, it says about the privy here, it is placed in the garden of such as have detached privies or in the court where one is, one is common to many. It contains from 30 to 100 feet of superficial area. Uh, and is from five to eight feet deep. So it goes into great detail about how deep they are and what they were like, really. One of the worst descriptions I've ever heard was when uh, a Board of Health member looked into the privy and he noticed when someone was working the water pump that the level of the privy or the privy water dropped considerably. So they were obviously extracting their own waste matter in, in drinking it, really. It's a shocking read. And like I said, Sir Charles Hastings wanted to improve the health of individuals living in Worcester. He, that was his main focus throughout his entire life, believe it or not. Now, the health report is very detailed and it also comes with illustrations like that one there. And I will draw your attention really to the plan, but more so to the diagram here. And what you have here is this little outhouse built at the side of the property. And it's labelled up as the larder, uh, so this is basically a place or or pantry, I should say, uh, which is where you're storing some food. And you will also notice there's a little window there and it says window, pantry window. And when you look, there's what looks like a pigsty just there and it says open cesspit. So you've got a lovely window from the pantry where the food is overlooking the cesspit which is adjoined to the privy which is filling up with waste matter it, it, it like I said you don't really want to be eating when you're hearing the descriptions from here and like I said these things would have been overflowing into the mud of the courtyard so when you go into your house there's no way of avoiding it you are literally walking in sewage it's absolutely everywhere now, this is a court, or shall we call it a yard, because they were sometimes called yards as well, at the back of Greyfriars. So you can actually see Greyfriars there. Uh, the uh, street, Fire Street, is beyond that. And you would have come through the gate, which is still there, and you entered a street, basically, with all these houses populated into it. So the best way I can describe it is people were literally living on top of each other. Um, another interesting way we used to live in Victorian times is you'd have the high street and there was lots of little alleyways coming off it. I always describe it as a bit like the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. And then you get all the closes coming off. And we don't use the word close. That's uh, for Edinburgh. We don't even use the word uh, ginnel or gunnel. Uh, we don't use the word alleyway for example we use the word entry and I'm sure people listening to this at No Worcester know about bull entry for example or shambles entry they're the only two left really um, I will draw your attention to this part of the report which is a street and court return and it says here bull entry now if you know bull entry it literally goes from the high street down to where Primark is so it's not that long if anything, it is actually shorter than 100 yards, basically. So bull entry, how many properties are in there? And it tells you 44 properties, 44 dwellings in bull entry. Even if you say that's 22 one side, 22 the other, that's still a lot of buildings crammed in less than 100 yards. And it's a narrow alleyway to access these buildings. Um, it says it's paved, which is a little bit better than some of the courts and some of the entries. And in this area for 44 dwellings, we have actually got nine privies. So a bit more market than most that only had one or two. And remember, these are all shared. Now, going back to the water supply, they go into detail about that as well. 
Um, it says here, the present water supply of Worcester is of three kinds. Well water, rain water and seven water, believe it or not. So they're taking it from a well, which is often tainted because the toilet basically is a hole in the ground. A well is a hole in the ground. So they're at the same water table. So it's often tainted with sewage. Um, they're also taking rainwater. So any uh, butts in buckets that are in the courtyard that could also get tainted, especially with rat urine, for example, they're drinking that. And then seven water, they're actually extracting water straight out the seven, which is basically an open sewer in its own right, really. So it's a shocking read. And like I said, do, if you get a chance, try and get hold or view the health report, because it is a really interesting one. It really goes to show what our ancestors had to put up with in an age before the NHS and before we have the cleanliness that we have today. Now, the churchyards are also listed here and they are a shocking read. I won't go into too much detail with them, but I'll pick out some of my favourites, shall I say, really. Um, we've got uh, St. John's Church that I always use as an example. Um, so St. John's Church, the churchyard is very full. In making graves, the grave digger often exposes the coffins in the adjacent grave. In digging a grave, a great many bones are exposed. Interments take place in the church. And when a vault is opened, the smell is frequently very offensive. The other worst one has to be All Saints. And I will cover this one briefly. The churchyard is very full, although interments still take place there. A great and uh, a very great annoyance used. Uh, uh, I'll go back to that. A very great annoyance used to be experienced by some of the inmates of the houses adjoining the churchyard. There was a lot of houses right up against the churchyard. Uh, these houses were partly below the level of the yard. Now, if you go down, uh, for example, Key Street and look at All Saints Church, it's actually high up. So the houses are actually below the grave level. They're below ground level. And it says here, uh, it was stated to me by some of the occupants that putrid matter actually oozed through the walls from the churchyard. How horrific is that? And we sometimes complain of a of a smelly drain, for example. It's nothing compared with what our ancestors had to put up with. But as I said, the health report was not just a document that sat on the shelf. Sir Charles Hastings followed it up. And there were all sorts of things implemented. This is a map of Bull Entry with the proposed drainage ditches and also drains and sewer pipes. And he was a great man that believed in uh, basically having precautions, taking precautions in not have to treat things. And therefore, what we have here is precautionary advice to local boards with reference to cholera, because like I said, he believed don't treat a person's illness. Let's try and prevent it in the first place. And that is a great thing. And that's what we're still doing today, which is why we still say make sure you wash your hands for 20 seconds. Make sure you wear a mask. These are all very, very key things. Keep your distance. And famously, don't go out if you don't need to, right, basically. Anyway, on that note, hopefully you've seen how important Sir Charles Hastings is and how our lives have been improved, not only by him, but the modern housing and the modern sanitation that we have today. Anyway, as always, stay safe and uh, have a good weekend. Bye bye.